is well known that Matt Powell has a giant inflatable banana in his backyard, which he calls Dr. Peel. However, he is not very well known for getting much right about anything on YouTube. And guess what? He's resurfaced again. This time with some information about stars and comets and how he thinks that they are proof for a young Earth. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Ford Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Raycon. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by making great sound for everyone. Their wireless earbuds start at about half the price of other premium audio brands. Co-founded by Ray J, celebrities like Mike Tyson are obsessed with Raycons. Raycon earbuds give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design for a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. I regularly use mine to listen to the radio whilst trying to do those odd jobs in the garden, or at least when I'm pretending to do those odd jobs. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colours and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. Plus, they have a free 45-day return policy. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 15% off your first purchase of Raycons. Right, back to today's video where Matt Powell and Dr. Peel are going to break down comets and stars and tell us all why they're proof of a young Earth. Away you go, guys. Hey guys, this is Matt Powell. So one of the things that people point to oftentimes for proof of evolution is actually the solar system. And they'll say that the solar system proves that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. I don't know if we would use the solar system itself. The solar system and by extension the Earth are pretty much the same age as they form together. But I kind of get what you're saying. But what I find interesting is if you actually look at the solar system and comets and stars in particular, you'll actually see that this idea that it's 4.5 billion years old is just completely bogus. Comets and stars in the solar system. You mean the one star. Yes, there are a lot of comets, almost 5,000 known ones. However, there could be as much as one trillion comets in the Oort cloud, which sits right at the edge of our solar system. It's just complete nonsense. And the reason that we know that is because stars actually die. They blow up about one per 25 years per galaxy. It's actually closer now to about one star explosion every 100 years in the Milky Way. Now that value may be or may not be higher in other galaxies. But we must remember that supernovae are the death throes of only high mass stars. Now, the sun is not a high mass star, so it won't die in this fashion. A lot of stars, like the sun, will just eject their outer layers in what we call a planetary nebula, and what will remain is a small, very tiny, and very dense white dwarf in the middle. So, we actually only find about 200 dead stars in our galaxy. And so what that proves is that our galaxy, the Milky Way, is less than 10,000 years old. Well, no, because as I said, we don't know of all of the dead stars in our galaxy. The 200 you mentioned are only those that we know of. We would be very foolish to state that these were the only dead stars in our galaxy. And besides, 10,000 years old is still vastly older than the 6,000 years old that you claim the Earth is. And we're also not taking into account the fact that most stars take millions of years to die because if it were billions of years old, we would have hundreds of thousands of dead stars in the galaxy. Again, how do we know that there are not? Some of those dead stars would have long left their interstellar guts spread across space, which would have gone on to seed other stars and star systems. But since there's less than 200 and only one per 25 years dies, that literally proves beyond any shadow of doubt that our solar system is young just based on star deaths. And as I've just explained, there is no way that we can possibly know just how many stars have died in the history of our galaxy. Just by acknowledging this fact alone, your proof becomes irrelevant. And so comets also are deteriorating over time, short period ones in particular, 
they orbit the sun every 200 years and they burn up three to five percent each orbit and so they can't be here from more than 10,000 years ago because they would have burnt up by now. Okay, but this is something I'm not gonna disagree with you on. As I stated, the Oort cloud is a cloud of dust and gas and ice surrounding the solar system. And it is the most likely place where these long and short period comets originate from. And again, 10,000 years still significantly messes up with your timeline somewhat. So I'm not really sure why you're talking about it. And so short period comets literally prove that the solar system is young as well. So stars and comets both prove that the solar system is not billions of years old and that you were lied to when somebody came to you and said that the earth was billions of years old or the solar system was billions of years old and that evolution was somehow a fact. No, what this proves is you have an extremely flimsy understanding regarding the natures of stars and comets and their life cycles. That is all. There is no literal proof, as you say, for a young Earth here. Folks, if evolution were true, there would be hundreds of thousands of dead stars in our galaxy and in other galaxies. But when we look at other galaxies, we see that there's only a few hundred dead stars. That we know of. Again, this is poor, poor proof for anything. When we look at our galaxy, only a few hundred dead stars. If one dies per 25 years, it literally proves beyond any shadow of doubt that the galaxy that we are in is a young galaxy and that we didn't have enough time to evolve from an amoeba all the way to humans. It's just absolutely ridiculous. You can just throw the theory away, throw the hypothesis of evolution away. The ACT research team, which is an international collaboration of scientists from 41 institutions in seven countries, have been studying and measuring the oldest light in the universe to come up with an age of 13.8 billion years. But let me guess, they're wrong. It's so easily falsifiable. Now the way that evolutionists will actually try to fix this problem is through what's known as the Oort cloud. They think that there's some Oort cloud that is literally spiraling new comets into our galaxy right now as we speak. And the craziest thing is, if you actually type in on Google Oort cloud evidence, the first thing that pops up is that there is no evidence that the Oort cloud exists. Okay, let's try this. Right, I've typed in Oort cloud evidence and the first thing that comes up is this. There are several points of evidence that the Oort cloud exists, though it is indeed still a hypothesis and lacks direct observation. That kind of flies in the face of what you're trying to say here, Matt, doesn't it? So they believe things without evidence. Evolution is a position that is defended against all reason and held to in spite of all reason. They don't care what the facts are, folks. You bring these things up to them and they'll just say, oh, well, the Oort cloud is spiraling new comets. So the ones that deteriorate, that's okay because we've got new ones coming in. Which is kind of what I said to be fair, but it doesn't mean I'm wrong. There is indeed indirect observational evidence that the Oort cloud exists and that it is the location of these short and long period comets. They don't even have an answer for the star problem. They don't have the answers, you know, so why? But it's funny because these are the people that want to tell you that the Bible has errors in it and there's no evidence for the Bible. And they complain to me all the time, just, they beg me in the comment section, Matt, we need evidence, Matt. Please give us evidence and answers. Why don't you turn the mirror on yourself? I don't really like looking at myself, Matt, but thank you. Anyway, I did address your ridiculous star evidence as just that, ridiculous. There's no evidence for the Oort cloud according to the scientists that are out there that even invented it. Dr. Oort, the man who invented it, literally knew there was no Oort cloud. He just made it up. He just made it up out of thin air and people talk about it like it's a fact, like it's really out there, but there's no evidence for it. Jan Oort was actually quite instrumental in figuring out that the sun was not the center of the Milky Way. And as his name suggests, proposed the existence of the Oort cloud. I don't think he doubted it at all. It's a position that's impossible to defend, honestly. God bless, guys. Well, I've just defended it without too much trouble. You can't keep repeating your arguments over and over and over and ignoring all of the rebuttals 
just because you think it's good evidence still. I mean, it's not like we have evidence for the fact that you've got a giant inflatable banana in your backyard, which you call Dr. Peel. He could be called Councillor Split for all we know. Well, there we go, another Tin Foil Tuesday, all done and dusted. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please, please do like and subscribe. Just enough time to once again thank Raycon for sponsoring today. Remember, if you click the link in the description or visit buyraycon.com slash simandan, you get 15% off your first Raycon purchase. I have been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great week, and I'll see you all on Friday, where I'll be claiming a Flat Earther's $1 million challenge. See you then.